Scramble, Konami's flagship series, was beginning to lose its popularity on arcades, which prompted the development of a new game in this genre for Konami. The result was, at the eyes of many, the flagship series not only for Konami, but for the whole shoot-em-up genre. Considered by many the greatest of all time, that game was Gradius. The game gives the player control of the Vic Viper, a ship whose job is to repel the forces of the evil Bacterian Empire from its home, the planet Gradius. To achieve this, the ship can be equipped with different power-ups with a unique upgrading system that became the main appeal of the game. The introduction of the power-up bar was revolutionary at the time. Instead of grabbing an item that gave the ship a specific power-up, the Vic Viper can get a capsule that appears after defeating specific brownish enemies, or group of enemies. Grabbing a capsule makes the selection of the power-up bar move a spot. When the ability the player wants is highlighted, pressing the power-up button equips the ship with that power-up. These abilities are Speed up Same as with Twin B, this power-up can be stacked up, making the ship faster every time. One or two levels of speed should be enough, since getting too much speed makes the player lose accuracy on tight spots. Missiles. This equips the Vic Viper with missiles that are dropped onto enemies that are below the ship, making it very useful against ground enemies' formations. In most ports, the missiles are shot using the same button as the normal shoot button, but in the arcade they had their own separate button. Double and laser. The ship can only use one of these power-ups at a time. Double equips the player with an extra stream of bullets that go in a diagonal upwards trajectory, which combined with missiles becomes very useful for levels that have ceiling and ground enemies at the same time. The laser is the most powerful shot, its stream can go through enemies, which means that a single button press can take care of various formations. In the arcade it has a large hit box, both above and below the laser stream, which makes it extremely useful. Optional Multiple this power-up gives the Vic Viper a shadow clone in the form of a ball that follows the ship's movements and basically multiplying the shooting power, firing bullets or lasers as well as missiles. In the arcade in some ports, the player can get up to four options, but in earlier home ports there can be only two at a time. Question mark. This equips the ship with a front shield, represented by two circular saw-like rotating balls. They protect the Vic Viper from front attacks, getting smaller as they get damaged until it disappears. You can only equip a new shield once the previous one is gone, which made most players always have the spot for the question mark selected to quickly re-equip a new barrier just as soon the shield is gone. Blue Capsule After a set number of capsules appears, enemies can drop a blue capsule which functions as this game's screen clear mega crash. We will take a look at all seven stages of the arcade, alongside the PC Engine version, which includes an extra stage between the fourth and fifth rounds of the arcade, and will be intercalating every stage with the NES and MSX ports of the game. There are some key differences between the arcade and home ports. Most notably, the NES and MSX ports can only equip the ship with two options and also the shield in the NES port can protect the Vic Viper from projectiles that come in every direction, not just from the front. Many ports feature shortcuts and bonus areas, but we won't be covering them in this video since we are aiming to showcase a normal loop that include every stage a player can encounter in a regular playthrough. We are also obligated to talk about the birth of the famous Konami code. Rumor has it, that when the Famicom version was being tested, a code was included to make the game easier, especially for the recovery when a life is lost. Since the powered down Vic Viper is no match for the Bacterian forces in later stages, which was later dubbed by fans as Gradius Syndrome, a cheat code was included to the game that automatically gave the ship a speed up, missiles, all options, and a full barrier. With the game paused, press, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, 
A and finally start again to unpause the game. The code became so popular that it was included in many NES Konami games in the future. Even though it is considered a cheat code, it came with some conditions. For every credit, the player gets just one instance to use the code, after that the code won't work. But, for every big core boss that the player defeats before the core turns red, another use of the code is added. So, for example, if a player gets to the fifth stage after having defeated every blue core, means that the ship has five chances to use the Konami code successfully. Speaking of pseudo cheat codes, there is a hidden power up in the NES version. If the player gets a power capsule with the question mark spot highlighted, returning the marker to the first spot of the bar, when the middle digit of the score is a zero, the ship will be equipped with the rapid fire function. This means that the fire button can be held down for an auto fire feature. With all this cleared up, let's begin the run. We begin the game completely powered down, so now just focus on defeating the first lines of popcorn enemies to get the power capsules, use the first one for a speed up to get a competent ship movement. After that keep stacking the capsules until you can get an option. After that try to get the brown enemies to get their capsules and get the missiles and double before entering the proper stage 1. With these power-ups we can easily take care of enemies from above and below. Go through the mountain if you want, but keep an eye for the oncoming enemies. In terms of power-ups, we will focus on getting the rest of the options for our ship. For the turret mountain, just go below and try to destroy the shooting target with double, missiles should take care of the ground enemies. The stage 1 boss is next now. The Popcorn Mountain. Just stay in this position and your missiles and shots should take care of any oncoming projectiles. After that, the big core makes its first appearance. The main strategy here is to dodge its lasers by moving up and down so it can chase you. After the core turns blue you can start shooting it until it explodes. Keep in mind that the same strategy applies for every big core boss. The beginning is very similar to the arcade and PC engine. We will stick to the same power-up order, starting with a speed-up and then an option when possible, followed by missiles. On MSX we will get another speed-up before the stage begin and will later get a laser for both versions. Enemies' attacks are harsh for a first stage, but this served to get used to the game's mechanics.
Again, you can go through the middle of the mountain, which gives a bonus for the NES version. Every capsule we get for now should be destined to get the other option and later the shield. Since we don't have an upward attack without the double, we have to go up without touching the ceiling to take out those enemies. Turrets are missing from the mountain on the Nintendo, so we can go just straight to the volcano boss. The same strategy applies here. Also we do the same for the big core, just keep in mind that the timing on MSX is slightly different, it shoots a while after stopping its movement, which can throw you off if you are used to its movements on other ports. The single line enemies are back, and we still need their capsules, so try to get them but be careful, since they start shooting bullets more and more. After getting all options we are aiming for the shield now. Once the stage really starts keep in mind that the screen can scroll up and down but it acts as we are just returning to the same spot. If we follow this path we won't have any problem with getting caught up in a bullet hell. The next power-up we want is the laser, so activate it when you can. After getting through this part, watch out for the orbs that instantly appear on screen that fly towards the ship quickly. Time for the stage 2 boss. If you stay on the left side and move up and down you won't have a problem. Just keep shooting and try to only move to a place you are certain that no orbs are spawning. Also, try to keep positioning the ship in between option, so you can have all fronts covered. Big core is up next. Same as before, but note how the laser can obliterate the core quickly. The stage brings on more popcorn enemies, go for the missing power-ups on MSX. For the NES we will try to get the auto-fire now. Remember to get a capsule that cycle the power-up bar when the middle digit of the score is zero. After getting it, we can continue getting capsules and get the shield. The stage itself is very different since these versions don't scroll up and down. Be careful with the bases where lines of enemies come out from. Same as with Twin B, the MSX can get harder than the NES.
we suggest to stay in the upper part of this stage for both version and always keep an eye for the enemy spawning stations. After this part, a maze begins, just keep calm and keep going, watching out for the appearing orbs and on to the boss battle. Again, the strategy is to keep to the left and swing up and down. Be extra careful because since we only have two options, we can't position the ship in between. The big core follows. Take your time in the NES, because if you kill it fast it will cause level 3 to skip. No simple lines of enemies here. Aggressive units fill the screen now. Do you best to get the laser now, since we need its piercing capacity. Keep getting power-ups until the shield position to have a new barrier at the ready when needed. The stage begins with the beloved Moais making their first ever appearance. This level can also scroll up and down, so it is best to stay in this path. A stream of lasers to their mouths should destroy the Moais, but if you are not precise with it, they won't receive any damage. In this Moai hallway, position your options to avoid getting hit from the places the barrier can't protect. After you can safely zoom out of the hallway, the stage 3 boss is next. These enemies are mother ships that leave their children to fill up the screen. Dodge the smaller units and try to stay in the middle of the screen to avoid the mother ships to get closer. If you don't destroy them, they will advance anyway, so be careful. After their time passes, it is time for the third big core. The first enemies can get out of hand in the NES version, but since the shield protect us from behind, we are safe. After the introduction, the Moai stage begins, since the stage doesn't scroll in these ports, we suggest going through the higher route. 
In the NES you skip the next stage if you destroy too many Moai heads, so we will dodge for now. Keep going through this way until this part, then we will take the low route, these are the last Moais, so destroy them if you have to. After getting out of the Moai maze, the boss battle is next. The motherships come one at a time in the NES port, so destroy them as they come. soon after the third big core appears. Lines of enemies are back, and we need their capsules to change the laser for the double for the upcoming stage. After we get it, get more capsules to have a new barrier ready. Once the stage starts you will notice it looks like the first one. This is because it is the same stage, but backwards. Missiles can take care of grounded enemies, but be quick to aim with the double shot upwards and dodge the bullet clutter that can occur, especially on the arcade version. When moving forward though the rain of projectiles, be very careful with enemies that shoot from behind the ship, since all the rear part of our ship is unprotected. Go through the lava only when you are sure you are clear to go and be very quick. After that just focus on swiftly eliminate the enemies and be careful with the green trash can that jumps around from below, since it can shoot a storm of bullets. After that, the stage 4 boss battle is next. Position yourself in the middle, arranging your option to avoid the umbrella enemies to circle around you. If you can position the ship to do just that, the fight will be soon over. Be careful with the big core because it appears suddenly from below and can destroy the Vic Viper it as touches it. Same as with the other versions, we will switch to double now.
Same strategy as the arcade version here, and remember that the barrier on MSX doesn't protect us from rear attacks. Keep an eye if an enemy gets past your ship. The upside down volcano is present on MSX, but missing on NES. and we will pause this version now. On the MSX the boss battle are the same umbrellas enemies that are present in the arcade. The ground enemies can get really annoying here, especially if they shoot you from behind. Do your best to stop the umbrellas quickly so the battle ends. The NES has the upside-down volcanoes that are just an upside-down version of the Stage 1 boss. Keep low and protect yourself with the option and the double shot. Soon after the big core appears, Time for the PC Engine exclusive stage, nicknamed the Graveyard. We will keep the double for now. The introductory popcorn enemies are nothing special this time, but the level greets us with these skeletons that explode in pieces if shot. Since enemy units come this way too it is nearly impossible to avoid shooting the skeletons, so be careful dodging the bones. Next up, the shooting skulls are introduced, dodge their snake-like projectiles and shoot them carefully. The best strategy is to stay in the low part of the stage in this area. If the barrier is almost gone, we can take a bullet or two on purpose to activate the new barrier in time for another bone storm. Keep in mind that if an enemy flies past the ship, it will shoot the Vic Viper from behind where it is unprotected.
when you arrive to this final part, destroy the enemies that leave the green ball, since it can divide itself and allot bullets, if possible, equip the laser now. The stage boss battle is next. It consists in various skulls filling the screen with their snake attacks. Just choose a spot below and dodge accordingly while you keep shooting. Soon enough the battle is over and Big Core shows up. Another graveyard stage, but very different from the PC Engine version. No exploding bones here. Statues come out from all places, and will shoot you if you cross their field of vision. Dodge them as much as you can and shoot the ones that cross your path. These blue pools spawn skulls that shoot triple bullets, destroy them as you are able. After the skulls, these bouncing bones appear filling the screen. They are indestructible which means they form a maze, similar to Xevious Bacurus. The shooting statues from before return, this time combined with the bones. Maneuver your way from above and dodge the last statue's projectiles. The unique boss battle is next. The first part consists of these spinning croissants. Taking them quickly as you can, keeping your distance and staying on the left. After that, these triples enemies appear, kill them before they separate, since they will quickly fly towards the ship if they do. Stay calm, and in the same place. The laser will take care of them and then the big core follows.
New enemies appear in the first part, also coming in a single line, accompanied by the circular dancing regular units. We will stick with the laser here for the rest of the game, be sure to have a shield ready to go here as well. The whole stage consists only of this new enemies called antennas or golems that shoot bullets from their arms. You can destroy the arm weak spots to stop the golems from shooting or aim to their bodies to destroy them altogether. The slowdown helps in dodging them, but keep in mind that losing a shield to these bullets happens almost every time, so have a new one ready to go. When the screen stops scrolling, more golems will fill the screen, acting as this stage's boss battle. Keep doing the same as you with the rest of the level and soon after the final big core appears. This level is very similar on all four versions. The new enemies from the introduction are still here. Remember to grab enough capsules to have a new barrier ready. The rest of the level is the same, the golems behave very similarly to the arcade, although the slowdown is very much noticeable and paired with the MSX chop scrolling this can get annoying.
just like we saw before the scrolling stops and golems keep coming. Time for the last big core, kill it as always one last time. The introductory enemies from last stage return but it is a very short run before the stage begins. Since we are approaching this one with the laser, make sure to kill ceiling enemies carefully, trying not to get caught in the web that populates this stage. When you get to this part, the safest strategy is to go to this downward path and hide from the line of the fire of the stage 6 boss, nicknamed, the womb. Just stay there and wait for it to go away if you can't properly position an option to shoot the laser directly at it. Another similar stage, there is nothing new in the intro to this stage. Once the stage begins, everything that was pointed out for the arcade version is valid here. Since we have the laser pay attention in destroying the ceiling enemies directly with the laser, For the last part, we will stick to the coward's route and hide below the level until the womb enemy times out.
for the last stage we will get more speed and keep the laser for the arcade, but for the PC engine we recommend change to the double power up. The introductory enemies are very hard this time, giving way to a bullet hell. Keep calm and you'll make it through to the mother ship. Enemies are stationed on both the ground and ceiling, and are soon joined with the duckers enemies that appear from both sides of the screen. For the arcade we can position the option like this and take advantage of the laser hit box. The appearing orbs from stage 2 make a return, joining the attack. The jumping green trash can also appear, making the bullets rain on the stage. Remember to renew the shield when needed. After this tight corridor, enemies' bases drop fast-moving lines of units. Be careful if any goes past your ship, since they will shoot from behind and will most likely destroy you. After that, all that's left is the last corridor. The laser cage enemy appears but we will stay in the top part to avoid getting trapped inside. Focus and shooting arranging your options so you can safely move to the sides to dodge bullets and the jumping duckers. When these tentacles appear try to shoot them fast. Even if you can't kill them go through the gap before the gates closes, or you will get left behind. All that's left now is the last enemy, the brain. If will not defend itself, you can shoot the anchors that hold it in place to defeat it, or just wait until it dies by itself. Time to enjoy the ending. Credits roll on the PC Engine version, while the arcade goes straight to the harder second loop. The intro goes out really fast. For both versions we will use double for this stage. Although for the MSX we will activate it later for lack of power capsules. Once we enter the mothership, just keep calm and try to stage in the middle of the screen dodging bullets and shooting to avoid the enemies that appear from all sides. Again after this tight corridor, the lines of enemies appear. Position the ship in order to destroy them as they come.
After that the last hallway begins. No electric trap this time, but the enemies are more varied and lethal. Soon after the tentacles and gate appear. Zoom through the door before it closes and all that it left now is to watch the pathetic brain disappear. Congratulations! Enjoy the ending and get ready for the much harder second loop. Thanks for watching until the end. Gradius remains an all-time favorite of every Shoot Em Up fan. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and we hope to cover the sequels sometime soon. We recommend Rewind's arcade video The History of Gradius for a look to the whole series. Next time, we will cover a contemporary Shoot Em Up game that expanded the view, figuratively, and literally of gamers.